Kaddish for Naomi Ginsburg, 1894-1956. Strange now to think of you, gone without corsets and eyes, while I walk on the sunny pavement of Greenwich Village, downtown Manhattan, clear winter noon, and I've been up all night talking, reading Kaddish aloud, listening to Ray Charles' blues shout blind on the phonograph, the rhythm, the rhythm, and your memory in my head three years after, and I read Adonais's last triumphant stanzas aloud, wept, realizing how we suffer and how death is that remedy all singers dream of, sing, remember, prophesy, as in the Hebrew anthem or the Buddhist book of answers and my own imagination of a withered leaf at dawn, dreaming back through life, your time and mine accelerating toward apocalypse, the final moment, the flower burning in the day and what comes after, looking back on the mind itself that saw an American city, a flash away, and the great dream of me or China, or you and a phantom Russia, or a crumpled bed that never existed, like a poem in the dark escaped back to oblivion. No more to say, and nothing to weep for but the beings in the dream, trapped in its disappearance, sighing, screaming with it, buying and selling pieces of phantom, worshiping each other, worshiping the God included in it all, longing or inevitability while it lasts a vision. Anything more? It leaps about me as I go out, walk the street, look back over my shoulder, 7th Avenue, the battlements of window office buildings shouldering each other, high under a cloud, tall as the sky an instant, and the sky above, old blue place, or down to the avenue of the south to, as I walk toward the Lower East Side, where you walked 50 years ago, little girl, from Russia, eating the first poisonous tomatoes of America, frightened on the dock, then struggling in the crowds of Orchard Street toward what? Toward Newark, toward candy store, first homemade sodas of the century, hand-churned ice cream in back room on musty brown, brown floor boards, toward education, marriage, nervous breakdown, operation, teaching school, learning to be mad in a dream. What is this life? toward the key in the window. And the great key lays its head of light on top of Manhattan and over the floor and lays down on the sidewalk in a single vast beam moving as I walk down first toward the Yiddish theater and the place of poverty you knew and I know but without caring now. Strange to have moved through Patterson, the West, Europe, here again with the cries of Spaniards now in the door stoops doors and dark boys on the street, fire escapes, old as you, though you're not old now, that left here with me, myself anyhow maybe as old as the universe. And I guess that dies with us all, enough to cancel all that comes. What came is gone forever, every time, that's good leaves it open for no regret, no fear, radiators, lack love, torture, even toothache in the end. Though while it comes, it's like a lion that eats the soul, and the lamb, the soul in us, alas, offering itself up in sacrifice to changes fierce hunger, hair and teeth, and the roar of bone pain, Skull bear, break rib, rot skin, brain tricked implacability. Aye, aye, we do worse. We are in a fix. You're out, death let you out. Death had the mercy. You're through with your century. Done with God, done with the path through it. Done with yourself at last. Pure, 
back to the babe dark before your father, before us all, before the world, there rest. No more suffering for you. I know where you've gone. It's good. No more flowers in the summer fields of New York. No joy now. No more fear of Louis. No more of his sweetness and glasses. His high school decades, debt, loves, frightened telephone calls, conception beds, relatives, hands. No more of Sister Eleanor. She gone before you. We kept it secret. You killed her. Or she killed herself to bear with you. An arthritic heart. But death's killed you both. No matter. No, your memory of your mother, 1915 tears in silent movies, weeks and weeks, forgetting a grieve, watching Marie Dressler address humanity, Chaplin dance in youth, or Boris Goodenough, Shalyapins at the Met, hauling his voice of a weeping czar by standing room with Eleanor and Mac, watching also the capitalist take seats in orchestra, white furs, diamonds, with the Yipsels hitchhiking through Pennsylvania in black baggy gym skirt pants, a photograph of four girls holding each other around the waist, laughing eye, too coy, virginal solitude of 1920, all girls grown old now and that long hair in the grave. Lucky to have had husbands later, you made it, I came too. Eugene, my brother before, still grieving now and will gream on to his last stiff hand as he goes through his cancer or kill later perhaps, soon he'll begin to think. And it's the last moment I remember when I see them all, through myself now, though not you. I didn't foresee what you felt. What more hideous gape of bad mouth came first to you? And were you prepared to go where? In that dark, that, in that God, a radiance, a Lord in the void? like an eye in a black cloud of a dream. Adonai at last, with you, beyond my remembrance, incapable to guess. Not merely the yellow skull in a grave and a box of worm dust and a stained ribbon. Death's head with halo? Can you believe it? Is it only the sun that shines once for the mind, only the flash of existence, then none ever was? Nothing but we, beyond what we have, what you had. That so pitiful. Yet triumph to have been here and changed like a tree, broken or flower, fed to the ground, but mad with its petals, colored, thinking great universe, shaken, cut in the head, leaf stripped, hid in an egg crate hospital, cloth wrapped, Soar, freaked in the moon brain, knotless. No flower like that flower which knew itself in the garden and fought the knife, lost. Cut down by an idiot snowman's icy, even in the spring, strange ghost thought, some death. Sharp icicle in his hand, crowned with old roses. Dog for his eyes, cock of a sweatshop, heart of electric irons, all the accumulations of life that wear us out, clocks, bodies, consciousness, shoes, breasts, begotten sons, your communism, paranoia into hospitals. You once kicked Eleanor in the leg. She died of heart failure a year later. You of stroke, asleep. Within a year, the two of you, sisters in death, is Eleanor happy? Her husband, Max, grieves alive in an office on Lower Broadway, lone large mustache over midnight accountings. Not sure. His life passes as he sees, and what does he doubt now? Still dream of making money, or that might have made money, hired nurse, had children, 
found even your immortality, Naomi. I'll see him soon. Now I've got to cut through to talk to you as I didn't when you had a mouth. Forever. And we're bound for that forever. Like Emily Dickinson's horses headed to the end, they know the way these steeds run faster than we think. It's our own life they cross and take with them. Magnificent, mourn no more, mart of heart, mind behind, married, dream, mortal, changed, ass and face done with the murder. In the world given, flower maddened, made no utopia, shut under pine, armed in earth, bound in lone, Jehovah accept. Nameless, one-faced, forever beyond me, beginningless, endless, father in death. Though I am not here for make prophecy, I am unmarried, I'm himless, I'm heavenless, headless in blisshood, I would still adore thee, heaven. After death, only one blessed in nothingness, not light or darkness, Dayless eternity, take this, this psalm from me, burst from my hand in a day, some of my time now given to nothing to praise thee. But death, this is the end, the redemption from wilderness, way for the wanderer, house sought for all, black handkerchief washed clean by weeping, page beyond psalm, last change of mine and Naomi to God's perfect darkness. Death, stay thy phantoms. Over and over, refrain of the hospitals. Still haven't written your history. Leave it abstract. A few images run through the mind. Like the saxophone chorus of houses and years, remembrance of electrical shocks. By long nights as a child in Patterson apartment watching over your nervousness, you were fat. Your next move? By that afternoon, I stayed home from school to take care of you once and for all when I vowed forever that once man disagreed with my opinion of the cosmos, I was lost. By my later burden, vow to illuminate mankind. This is release of particulars. Mad as you. Sanity only a trick of agreement. But you stared out the window on the Broadway church corner and spied a mystical assassin from Newark. So phoned the doctor. OK, go away for a rest. So I put on my coat and walked you down the street. On the way, a grammar school boy screamed unaccountably, where you going, lady, to death? And you covered your nose with a moth-eaten fur collar. Gas mask against poison sneaked into the downtown atmosphere, sprayed by grandma. And was the driver of the cheese box public service bus a member of the gang? You shuddered at his face. I could hardly get you on to New York, to very Times Square, to grab another greyhound, where we hung around two hours fighting invisible bugs and Jewish sickness, breeze poisoned by Roosevelt, out to get you, and me tagging along, hoping it would end in a quiet room in a Victorian house by a lake Ride three hours through tunnels past all American industry, Bayonne, New Jersey, preparing for World War II, tanks, gas fields, soda factories, diners, locomotive roundhouse fortresses, into Piney Woods, New Jersey, calm towns, Indians, long roads through sandy tree fields, bridges by deerless creeks, old wampum loading the stream bed, down there, a tomahawk or Pocahontas bone, and a million old ladies voting for Roosevelt in brown small houses, roads off the madness highway. 
perhaps a hawk in a tree, or a hermit looking for an owl-filled branch, all the time arguing, afraid of strangers in the forward double seat, snoring regardless. What bus ride they snore on now today. Alan, you don't understand. It's ever since those three big sticks up my back, they did something to me in the hospital. They poisoned me. They want to see me dead. Three big sticks, three big sticks. The bitch, old grandma, Bubba. Last night I saw her dressed in pants like an old man with a sack on her back climbing over the brick side of the apartment on the fire escape with poison germs to throw on me at night. Maybe Louis is helping her. He's under our power. I'm your mother. Take me to Lakewood, near where Graf Zeppelin had crashed before, all Hitler in the great explosion, where I can hide. We got there. Dr. Watts's rest home. She hid behind a closet, demanded a blood transfusion. We were kicked out, tramping with valise to unknown shady lawn houses, dusk, pine trees after dark, long dead streets filled with crickets and poison ivy. I shut her up by now. Big house, rest home, rooms. Gave the landlady her money for the week, carried up the iron valise, sat on a bed waiting to escape. Neat room, attic, friendly bed cover, lace curtains, spinning wheel rug, stained wallpaper, old as Naomi. We were home. I left on the next bus to New York, lay my head back in the last seat, depressed. The worst yet to come, abandoning her, road and torpor. I was only 12. Would she hide in her room and come out cheerful for breakfast? Or lock her door and stare through the window for side street spies? Listen at keyholes for Hitlerian invisible gas? Dream in a chair? or mock me by in front of a mirror alone. Twelve, riding the bus at night through New Jersey, have left Naomi to the Parkai at Lakewood's haunted house, left to my own fate bus, sunk in a seat, all violins broken, my heart sore in my ribs, mine was empty, would she were safe in her coffin, or Back at normal school in Newark, studying up on America in a black skirt. Winter on the street without lunch, a penny a pickle. Home at night to take care of Eleanor in the bedroom. First nervous breakdown was 1919. She stayed home from school and lay in a dark room for weeks. Something bad, never said what. Every noise hurt. Dreams of the creeks of Wall Street. Before the Gray Depression, went upstate New York recovered. Lou, my father, took photo of her sitting cross leg on the grass, long hair wound with flowers, smiling, playing lullabies on mandolin, poison ivy smoke in left wing summer camps, and me in infancy saw trees. Or back teaching school, laughing with idiots, the backward classes, her Russian specialty, morons with dreamy lips, Thin feet and sicky fingers, sway-backed, rachitic, great heads pendulous over Alice in Wonderland, a blackboard full of C, A, T. Naomi reading patiently, some story out of a communist fairy book, a tale of the sudden sweetness of the dictator, forgiveness of warlocks, armies kissing, death's heads around the green table, the king and the workers, Patterson Press printed them up in the 30s till she went mad or they folded both. Oh, Patterson, I got home late that night. Louie was worried. How could I be so? Didn't I think I shouldn't have left her? Mad in Lakewood, call the doctor, phone the home in the pines. Too late. Went to bed exhausted, wanting to leave the world. Probably that year, newly in love with Paul Roth, my high school mind hero a Jewish boy who became a doctor later, then a silent, neat kid. I, later, laying down life for him, moved to Manhattan, followed him to college, prayed on the ferry boat to help mankind if I were admitted, 
vowed the day I journeyed to my entrance exam. By being an honest, revolutionary labor leader, I would train for that, inspired by Sacco Vanzetti, Norman Thomas, Debs, Altgeld, Sandberg, Poe, Little Blue Books. I wanted to be president or senator. Ignorant, whoa. Later, dreams of kneeling by Roth's shocked knees, declaring my love of 1941. What sweetness he'd have shown me, though, that I'd wished him and despaired. I, first love, a crush, later, a mortal avalanche, whole mountains of homosexuality, matterhorns of cock, grand canyons of asshole, weight on my melancholy head. Meanwhile, I walked on Broadway Patterson imagining infinity like a rubber ball without any space beyond it. What's outside? Coming home to Graham Avenue, still melancholy, passing the lone green hedges across the street, dreaming after the movies. The telephone rang at 2 a.m. Emergency. She'd gone mad. Naomi hiding under the bed, screaming bugs of Mussolini. Help! Louis! Bubba! Fascist! Death! The landlady frightened. The old fag attendant screaming back at her. Terror that woke the neighbors old ladies on the second floor recovering from menopause, all those rags between thighs, clean sheets, sorry over lost babies, husbands ashen, children sneering at Yale, or putting oil in their hair at CCNY, or trembling in Montclair State Teachers College like Eugene. Her big leg crouched to her breast, her hand outstretched, keep away, wool dress on her thighs, fur coat dragged under the bed, she barricaded herself under the bed spring with suitcases. Louis in pajamas, listening on the phone, frightened. Do now? Who could know? My fault, delivering her to solitude, sitting in the dark room on the sofa, trembling, trying to figure out. He took the morning train to Lakewood. Naomi, still under the bed, thought he brought poison cops. Naomi screaming, Louis, what happened to your heart then? Have you been killed by Naomi's ecstasy? Dragged her out around the corner, a cab forced her in with valise, but the driver left them at the drugstore. Bus stop, two hours wait. I lay in bed, nervous in the four-room apartment, the big bed in the living room next to Louis' desk, shaking. He came home that night late, told me what happened. Naomi at the prescription counter defending herself from the enemy. Racks of children's books, douche bags, aspirins, pots, blood. Don't come near me, murderers, keep away. Promise not to kill me. Louis in horror at the Coke fountain. With Lakewood Girl Scouts, soda addicts, nurses, busmen hung on the schedule, police from a county precinct dumbed, and a priest dreaming of pigs on an ancient cliff, smelling the air, Louis pointing to emptiness, customers vomiting their cokes or staring, Louis humiliated, Naomi triumphant, the announcement of the plot, bus arrives, the drivers won't have them on a trip to New York. Phone calls to Dr. Watson, she needs a rest, the mental hospital, state gray stone doctors, Bring her here, Mr. Ginsburg. Naomi, Naomi, sweating, bulge-eyed, fat, the dress unbuttoned at one side, hair over her brow, her stocking hanging evilly on her legs, screaming for a blood transfusion, one righteous hand upraised, a shoe in it, barefoot in the pharmacy. The enemies approach. What poisons, tape recorders, FBI, Zdanov hiding behind the counter, Trotsky mixing rat bacteria in the back of the store, Uncle Sam in Newark plotting deathly perfumes in the Negro district, Uncle Ephraim drunk with murder in the politician's bar, dreaming of Mayor Haig, Aunt Rose passing water through the needles of the Spanish Civil War, till the hired $35 ambulance came from Red Bank, 
grabbed her arms, strapped her on the stretcher, moaning, poisoned by imaginaries, vomiting chemicals through New Jersey, begging mercy from Essex County to Morristown, and back to Greystone, where she lay three years. That was the last breakthrough delivered to the madhouse again. On what wards? I walked there later, oft. Old catatonic ladies, gray as cloud or ash or walls, sit crooning over floor space, chairs, and their wrinkled hags a creep, accusing, begging my 13-year-old mercy. Take me home. I went alone sometimes, looking for the lost Naomi taking shock. And I'd say, no, you're crazy, Mama. Trust the doctors. And Eugene, my brother, her elder son, away studying law in a furnished room in Newark, came Patterson Ward next day. And he sat on the broken down couch in the living room. We had to send her back to Greystone, his face perplexed so young, then eyes with tears, then crept weeping all over his face. What for? Well, vibrating in his cheekbones, eyes closed up, high voice, Eugene's face of pain. Him, far away, escaped to an elevator in the Newark library, his bottle daily milk on windowsill, a $5 a week furnished room downtown on trolley tracks, he worked eight hours a day for 20 a week, through law school years, stayed by himself, innocent near Negro whorehouses, unlaid, poor virgin, writing poems about ideals and politics letters to the editor of the Patterson Evening News. We both wrote, denouncing Senator Bora and the isolationists, and we both felt mysterious toward the Patterson City Hall. I sneaked inside it once, local Moloch Tower with phallus spire and cap of ornament, strange Gothic poetry that stood on Market Street, a replica of Lyon Hotel de Ville. Wings, balcony, and scrollwork portals, gateway to the giant city clock, secret map room full of Nathaniel Hawthorne, dark Debs in the board of tax, Rembrandt smoking in the gloom, silent polished desks in the great committee room. Alderman, Board of Finance, Mosca, the hairdresser, a plot. Crap the gangster, issuing orders from the John. The madmen, struggling over zone. Fire, cops, backroom metaphysics. We're all mad. Outside, by the bus stop, Eugene stared through childhood, where the evangelist preached madly for three decades, hard-haired, cracked, and true to his mean Bible. Chalk, prepare to meet thy God on civic pave, or God is love on the railroad overpass concrete. He raved like I do rave, the lone evangelist, death on city hall. But Jean Young, been Montclair State Teachers College four years, taught half a year and quit to go ahead in life, afraid of discipline problems, dark sex, Italian students, raw girls getting laid, no English, sonnets disregarded, and he did not know much, just that he lost. So broke his life in two and paid for law school, read huge blue books and rode the ancient elevator 13 miles away in Newark and studied up hard for the future. Just found the scream of Naomi on his failure doorstep for the final time Naomi gone, us lonely, home, him sitting there. Then have some chicken soup, Eugene. The man of evangel wails in front of City Hall. And this year, Lou has poetic loves of suburb middle age, in secret, music from his 1937 book, Sincere, he longs for beauty. No love since Naomi screamed, since 1923, now lost in Greystone Ward. New shock treatment for her, electricity following 40 insulin, and metrosol had made her fat. 
so that a few years later she came home again. We'd much advanced and planned. I waited for that day, my mother again to cook and play the piano, sing at mandolin, lung stew, and stanka rasin, and the communist line on the war with Finland, and Louis in debt, suspected to be poisoned money, mysterious capitalisms. She walked down the long front hall and looked at the furniture. She never remembered it all. Some amnesia examined the doilies, and the dining room set was sold. The mahogany table, 20 years love, gone to the junk man. We still had the piano and the book of Poe and the mandolin, though needed some string, dusty. She went to the bed back room to lay down in bed and ruminate or nap. Hi, I went in with her, not leave her by herself, lay in bed next to her, shades pulled, dusky, late afternoon, Louis at the front desk waiting, perhaps boiling chicken for supper. Don't be afraid of me because I'm just coming back home from the hospital, I'm your mother. Poor love, lost, a fear, I lay there, said, I love you, Naomi stiff next to her arm. I would have cried. Was this the comfortless lone union? Nervous, and she got up soon. Was she ever satisfied? And by herself on the new couch by the windows, uneasy, cheek leaning on her hand, narrowing eye, at what fate that day, picking her tooth with her nail, lips formed and oh, Suspicion, thoughts, old, worn, vagina, absent side glance of eye, some evil debt written in the wall unpaid, and the aged breasts of Newark come near. May have heard radio gossip through the wires in her head, controlled by three big sticks left in her back by gangsters in amnesia through the hospital, caused pain between her shoulders into her head, Roosevelt should know her case, she told me, afraid to kill her now, the, that the government knew their names, traced back to Hitler, wanted to leave Louis's house forever. One night a sudden attack, her noise in the bathroom, like croaking up her soul, convulsions, red vomit coming out of her mouth, diarrhea water exploding from her behind, on all fours in the toilet, urine running between her legs, left retching on a tile floor, smeared with her black feces, unfainted, at 40, varicose, nude, fat, doomed, hiding outside the apartment door near the elevator calling police, yelling for her girlfriend Rose to help. Once locked herself in with razor or iodine, could hear her cough in tears at the sink. Lou broke through the glass green painted door, we pulled her out into the bedroom, then quiet for months that winter, walked alone nearby on Broadway, read her daily worker, broke her arm, fell on icy street, began to scheme escape from cosmic financial murder plots. Later, she ran away to the Bronx to her sister Eleanor, and there's another Sega of late Naomi in the Bronx. Or through Eleanor or the workman's circle where she worked, addressing envelopes she made out, went shopping for Campbell's tomato soup, saved money Louis mailed her. Later, she found a boyfriend, and he was a doctor. Dr. Isaac worked for the National Maritime Union, now Italian bald and pudgy old doll, who was himself an orphan. But they kicked him out, old cruelties, sloppier, sat around on a bed or chair in a corset, dreaming to herself. I'm hot. I'm getting fat. I used to have such a beautiful figure before I went to the hospital. You should have seen me in Woodbine. This in a furnished room around the NMU Hall, 1943. Looking at naked baby pictures in the magazine, baby powder advertisements. Strained lamb carrots. I will think nothing but beautiful thoughts. Revolving her head 
Round and around on her neck at window light in summertime, in hypnotize, in Dovin dream recall. I touch his cheek, I touch his cheek, he touches my lips with his hand. I think beautiful thoughts, the baby has a beautiful hand. Or no shake of her body, disgust. Some thought of Buchenwald, some insulin passes through her head. A grimace, nerve shudder, and involuntary, as I shudder, for instance, when I piss. Bad chemical in her cortex. No, don't think of that. He's a rat. Naomi. And when we die, we become an onion, a cabbage, a carrot, or a squash, a vegetable. I come downtown from Columbia College and agree. She reads the Bible, thinks beautiful thoughts all day. Yesterday I saw God. What did he look like? Well, in the afternoon, I climbed up a ladder. He has a cheap cabin in the country, like Monroe, New York, the chicken farms in the woods. He was a lonely old man with a white beard. I cooked supper for him. I made him a nice supper. Lentil soup, vegetables, bread and butter, milts. He sat down at the table and ate. He was sad. I told him, look at all these fightings and killings down there. What's the matter? Why don't you put a stop to it? I try, he said. That was all he could do. He looked tired. He's a bachelor so long. He likes lentil soup. <laughs> Serving me, meanwhile, a plate of cold fish, chopped raw cabbage dripped with tap water, smelly tomatoes, weak old health food, grated beets and carrots with leaky juice, warm, more and more disconsolate food. I can't eat it for nausea sometimes. The charity of her hands, stinking with Manhattan, madness, desire to please me, cold undercooked fish, pale red near the bones, her smells, and off naked in the room, so that I stare ahead or turn to a book ignoring her. One time I thought she was trying to make me come layer, flirting to herself at the sink, lay back on huge bed that filled most of the room, dress up around her hips, big slash of hair, Scars of operations, pancreas, belly wounds, abortions, appendix, stitching of incisions, pulling down in the fat like hideous thick zippers, ragged long lips between her legs. What even, smell of asshole? I was cold. Later, revolted a little. Not much. Seemed perhaps a good idea to try. Know the monster of the beginning womb. Perhaps that way. Would she care? She needs a lover. Vies borach, vies tabach, vies poar, vies roman, vies nase, vies shador, vies chale, vies shalo, shmed, kusho, brichu. And Louis reestablishing himself in Patterson, grimy apartments in Negro district, living in dark rooms but found himself a girl he later married. Falling in love again, though seer and shy, hurt with 20 years Naomi's mad idealism. Once I came home after a long time in New York, he's lonely, sitting in the bedroom. He at desk, chair, turned round to face me, wept tears in red eyes under his eyeglasses that we had all left him. Jean gone strangely into the army, she out on her own in New York, almost childish in her furnished room. So Louis walked downtown to post office to get mail, taught in high school, stayed at poetry desk, forlorn, ate, ate grief at Bickford's all these years, are gone. Eugene got out of the army, came home changed and alone, cut off his nose in a Jewish operation. For years, Stopped girls on Broadway for cups of coffee to get laid. Went to NYU, Syria's there, to finish law. And Jean lived with her, ate naked fish cakes, cheap, while she got crazier, or he got thin, or felt helpless. Naomi striking 1920 poses at the moon, half naked in the next bed. Bit his nails and studied. Was the weird nurse son. Next year he moved to a room near Columbia, though she wanted to live with her children, Listen to your mother's plea, I beg you. Louis still sending her checks. 
I was in the bug house that year eight months, my own visions unmentioned in this here lament. But then when half mad, Hitler in her room, she saw his mustache in the sink, afraid of Dr. Isaac now, suspecting he was in on the Newark plot, went up to Bronx to live near Eleanor's rheumatic heart. And Uncle Max never got up before noon, though Naomi at 6 a.m. was listening to the radio for spies or searching the windowsill for, in the empty lot downstairs, an old man creeps with his bag, stuffing packages of garbage in his hanging black overcoat. Max's sister Edie works, 17 years bookkeeper at Gimbel's, lived downstairs in the apartment house divorced. So Edie took in Naomi on Rochambeau Avenue. Woodlawn Cemetery is across the street, vast dale of graves where Poe once. Last stop on the Bronx subway. Lots of communists in that area. Who enrolled for painting classes at night in Bronx Adult High School? Walked alone under Van Cortland elevated line to class. Paints Naomi-isms. Humans sitting on the grass in some camp, no worry, summer's, yummer, summer's your. Saints with droopy faces and long, ill-fitting pants from the hospital. Brides in front of the Lower East Side with short grooms. Lost L trains running over the Babylonian apartment rooftops of the Bronx. Sad paintings. But she expressed herself. Her mandolin gone, all strings broken her head, she tried, toward beauty or some old life message, but started kicking Eleanor, and Eleanor had heart trouble, came upstairs and asked Eleanor about spydom for hours. Eleanor frazzled. Max away at the office, accounting for cigar stores till at night. I am a great woman, am truly a beautiful soul, and because of that, they, Hitler, Grandma, Bubba, Hearst, the capitalists, Franco, the Daily News, the 20s, Mussolini, the living dead, want to shut me up. Bubba's the head of a spider network. Kicking the girls, Edie and Eleanor. Woke Edie at midnight to tell her she was a spy, and Eleanor a rat. Edie worked all day and couldn't take it. She was organizing the union, and Eleanor began dying upstairs in bed. The relatives called me up. She's getting worse. I was the only one left. Went on the subway with Eugene to see her. Ate stale fish. My sister whispers in the radio, Louis must be in, on the, in the apartment. His mother tells him what to say. Liars! I cooked for my two children. I played the mandolin. Last night the nightingale woke me. Last night when all was still. It sang in the golden moonlight from on the wintry hill. She did. I pushed her against the door and shouted, don't kick Eleanor. She stared at me, contempt, die, disbelief. Her sons are so naive, so dumb. Eleanor is the worst spy, she's taking orders. No wires in the room, I'm yelling at her. Last ditch, Eugene listening on the bed. What can he do to escape that fatal mama? You've been away from Louis years already. Grandma's too old to walk. We're all alive at once then, even me and Jean and Naomi in one mythological cousin-esque room, screaming at each other in the forever, I in a Columbia jacket, she half undressed. I banging against her head, which saw radios, sticks, Hitlers, the gamut of hallucination, for real, her own universe, no road that goes elsewhere to my own, no America, not even a world, that you go as all men, as Van Gogh, as Mad Hannah, all the same to the last doom, thunders, spirits, lightning. I've seen your grave. Oh, strange Naomi, my own cracked grave. Shemai Israel, I am Svulevrum, you in death. 
your last night in the darkness of the Bronx. I phone called through hospital to secret police. That came when you and I were alone, shrieking at Eleanor in my ear, who breathed hard in her own bed and got thin. Nor will forget the door knock at your fright of spies, law advancing on my honor, eternity entering the room, you running to the bathroom undressed, hiding in protest from the last heroic fate, staring at my eyes betrayed, the final cops of madness rescuing me. From your foot against the broken heart of Eleanor, your voice at Edie weary of gimbals coming home to a broken radio, and Louis needing a poor divorce, he wants to get married soon. Eugene dreaming, hiding on 125th Street, suing Negroes for money on crud furniture, defending black girls. Protests from the bathroom, said you were sane. Dressing in a cotton robe, your shoes, then new, your purse and newspaper clippings, now your honesty. As vainly you made your lips more real with lipstick, looking in the mirror to see if the insanity was me or a car full of police or grandma spying at 78, your vision, her climbing over the walls of the cemetery with a political kidnapper's bag or what you saw on the walls of the Bronx in pink nightgown at midnight staring out the window on the empty lot. Oh, Rochambeau Avenue, playground of phantoms, last apartment in the Bronx for spies, last home for Eleanor and Naomi. Here, these communist sisters lost their revolution. All right. Put on your coat, missus. Let's go. We have the wagon downstairs. You want to come with her to the station? The ride then held Naomi's hand, held her head to my breast. I'm taller. Kissed her and said I did it for the best. Eleanor sick. Max with his heart condition needs. To me, why did you do this? Yes, missus, your son will have to leave you in an hour. The ambulance came in a few hours. Drove off at 4 a.m. to some Bellevue in the night downtown, gone to the hospital forever. I saw her led away. She waved, tears in her eyes. Two years after a trip to Mexico, bleak in the flat plain near Brentwood, scrub brush and grass around the unused railroad train track to the crazy house. New brick, 20-story central building, lost on the vast lawns of Madtown on Long Island, huge cities of the moon. Asylum spreads out giant wings above the path to a minute black hole, the door, like entrance through a crotch. I went in, smelled funny, the halls again, up elevator, to a glass door on the woman's ward, to Naomi, two nurses, buxom white. They let her out. Naomi stared, and I gasped. She'd had a stroke, too thin, shrunk on her bones, age come to Naomi, now broken into white hair, loose dress on her skeleton, face sunk, old, withered, cheek of crone, one hand stiff, heaviness of forties and menopause reduced by one heart stroke, lame now, wrinkles, a scar on the head, lobotomy, Ruined, the hand dipping downwards to death. Oh, Russian-faced woman on the grass, your long black hair is crowned with flowers. The mandolin is on your knees. Communist beauty, sit here married in the summer among daisies, promised happiness at hand. Holy mother, now you smile on your love. Your world is born anew. Children run naked in the fields spotted with dandelions. They eat in the plum tree grove at the end of the meadow and find a cabin where a white-haired Negro teaches the mystery of his rain barrel. Blessed daughter, come to America. I long to hear your voice again remembering your mother's music in the song of the natural front. 
O oh, glorious muse that bore me from the womb, gave suck first mystic life and taught me talk and music, from whose pained head I first took vision, tortured and beaten in the skull, what mad hallucinations of the damned that drive me out of my own skull to seek eternity till I find peace for thee, O oh, poetry and for all mankind call on the origin, death, which is the mother of the universe. Now wear your nakedness forever, white flowers in your hair, your marriage sealed behind the sky. No revolution might destroy that maidenhood. O oh, beautiful garbo of my karma, all photographs from 1920 in Camp Nickadigat here unchanged, with all the teachers from Newark, nor Eleanor be gone, nor Max await his specter, nor Louis retire from this high school. Back, you, Naomi, skull on you, Gaunt immortality and revolution come, small broken woman. The ashen indoor eyes of hospitals ward grayness on skin. Are you a spy? I sat at the sour table, eyes filling with tears. Who are you? Did Louis send you? The wires in her hair as she beat on her head. I'm not a bad girl. Don't murder me. I hear the ceiling. I raised two children, two years since I'd been there. I started to cry. She stared. Nurse broke up the meeting a moment. I went into the bathroom to hide against the toilet white walls. The horror, to, I weeping, to see her again. The horror as if she were dead through funeral rot in the horror. I came back, she yelled more. They led her away. You're not Alan. I watched her face, but she passed by me, not looking. Opened the door to the ward. She went through without a glance back, quiet suddenly. I stared out. She looked old, the verge of the grave. Oh, the horror. Another year. I left New York. On West Coast, in Berkeley Cottage, dreamed of her soul, that through life, in whatever form it stood in that body, ashen or manic, gone beyond joy, near its death, with eyes, was my own love in its form. Thee, Naomi, my mother on earth still, Send her long letter, and wrote hymns to the mad, work of the merciful Lord of poetry that causes the broken grass to be green, or the rock to break in grass, or the sun to be constant to earth, sun of all sunflowers and days on bright iron bridges, what shines on old hospitals as on my yard. Returning from San Francisco one night, Orlovsky in my room, Phil Whalen in his peaceful chair, a telegram from Jean, Naomi dead. Outside, I bent my head to the ground under the bushes near the garage. Knew she was better at last, not left to look on earth alone, two years of solitude, no one at age nearing 60, old woman of skulls, once long tressed Naomi of Bible, or Ruth who wept in America, Rebecca aged in Newark, David remembering his harp, now lawyer at Yale, or Svulavrum, Israel, Abraham, myself, to sing in the wilderness toward God, O oh, Elohim. So to the end, two days after her death, I got her letter. Strange prophecies anew. She wrote, the key is in the window 
The key is in the sunlight at the window. I have the key. Get married, Alan. Don't take drugs. The key is in the bars, in the sunlight, at the window. Love, your mother, which is Naomi. Him. In the world which he has created according to his will, blessed, praised, magnified, lauded, exalted, the name of the Holy One, blessed is he. In his house in Newark, blessed is he. In the mad house, blessed is he. In the house of death, blessed is he. Blessed be he in his homosexuality. Blessed be he in his paranoia. Blessed be he in the city. Blessed be he in the book. Blessed be he who dwells in the shadow. Blessed be he. Blessed be he. Blessed be you, Naomi, in tears. Blessed be you, Naomi, in fears. Blessed, blessed, blessed in sickness. Blessed be you, Naomi, in hospitals. Blessed be you, Naomi, in solitude. Blessed be your triumph. Blessed be your bars. Blessed be your last year's loneliness. Blessed be your failure. Blessed be your stroke. Blessed be the close of your eye. Blessed be the gaunt of your cheek. Blessed be your withered thighs. Blessed be thee, Naomi, in death. Blessed be death. Blessed be death. Blessed be he who leads all sorrow to heaven. Blessed be he in the end. Blessed be he who builds heaven in darkness. Blessed be he. Blessed be he. Blessed be death on us all. Only to have not forgotten the beginning in which she drank cheap sodas in the morgues of Newark, only to have seen her weeping on gray tables in long wards of her universe, only to have known the weird ideas of Hitler at the door, the wires in her head, the three big sticks rammed down her back, the voices in the ceiling shrieking out her ugly early lays for 30 years, only to have seen the time jumps, memory lapse, the crash of wars, the roar and shot silence of a vast electric shock. Only to have seen her painting crude pictures of elevateds running over the rooftops of the Bronx, her brothers dead in Riverside or Russia, her lone in Long Island writing a last letter, and her image in the sunlight at the window. The key is in the sunlight at the window in the bars. The key is in the sunlight. Only to have come to that dark night on iron bed by stroke when the sun gone down on Long Island and the vast Atlantic roars outside the great call of being to its own to come back out of the nightmare, divided creation with her head laying on a pillow of the hospital to die. In one last glimpse, all earth, one everlasting light in the familiar blackout. No tears for this vision. But that the key should be left behind at the window, the key in the sunlight to the living, that can take that slice of light in hand and turn the door and look back, see creation glistening backwards to the same grave, Size of the universe, size of the tick of the hospital's clock on the archway over the white door. Oh, mother, what have I left out? Oh, mother, what have I forgotten? Oh, mother, farewell with a long black shoe. Farewell with communist party and a broken stocking. Farewell with six dark hairs on the wen of your breast. 
Farewell with your old dress and a long black beard around the vagina. Farewell with your sagging belly, with your fear of Hitler, with your mouth of bad short stories, with your fingers of rotten mandolins, with your arms of fat Patterson porches, with your belly of strikes and smokestacks, with your chin of Trotsky and the Spanish Civil War, with your voice singing for the decaying over broken workers, with your nose of bad lay, with your nose of the smell of the pickles of Newark, with your eyes, with your eyes of Russia, with your eyes of no money, with your eyes of false China, with your eyes of Aunt Eleanor, with your eyes of starving India, with your eyes pissing in the park, with your eyes of America itself taking a fall, with your eyes of your failure at the piano, with your eyes of your relatives in California, with your eyes of Ma Rainey dying in an ambulance, with your eyes of Czechoslovakia attacked by robots, with your eyes going to painting class at night in the Bronx, with your eyes of the killer grandma you see on the horizon from the fire escape, with your eyes running naked out of the apartment screaming into the hall, with your eyes being led away by policemen to an ambulance, with your eyes strapped down on an operating table, with your eyes with a pancreas removed, with your eyes of appendix operation, with your eyes of abortion, with your eyes of ovaries removed, with your eyes of shock, with your eyes of lobotomy, with your eyes of divorce, with your eyes of stroke, with your eyes alone, with your eyes, with your eyes, with your death full of flowers. Caw, caw, caw. Crows shriek in the white sun over gravestones in Long Island. Lord, 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 Naomi, underneath this grass, my half-life and my own as hers. Caw, caw, my eye be buried in the same ground where now I stand as angel. Lord, Lord, great eye that stares on all and moves through a black cloud. Caw, caw, strange cry of beings flung up into the sky over the waving trees. Lord, Lord, O oh grinder of giant beyonds, my voice in a boundless field in Sheol. Caw, caw, the call of time rent out of foot and wing, an instant in the universe. Lord, Lord, an echo in the sky, the wind through ragged leaves, the roar of memory, caw, caw, all years my birth a dream. Caw, caw, New York, the bus, the broken shoe, the vast high school. Caw, caw, all visions of the Lord, 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 caw, caw, caw. Lord, 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 caw, 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 Lord.